that, that, that brings up a point that uh, the radical nature of Arida seems to be what this time requires. If I study the teachings of the Hindu times and the different yugas and the different epics and the different, like we're in a certain era now. You say in certain eras, uh, you know, devotion is what is called for and at different epics certain qualities of spiritual teachings are required and in the Kali Yuga what is absolutely required is only liberation, only that, because the time that we live in now is so intense in terms of the e meeting of the world in one basket, one moment, sure. one time. Sure. Everything is colliding into their, their provincial teachings are now global. Yeah. And so it seems like, as he points out, that this time in the world is characterized by ambivalence or the world is in its adolescence. It's in a kind of polarity. It's everybody's holding on to their extremes. And one of the things that Arida always points to is the seven stages, and that not only applies to the individual, but it also has a kind of a cosmic kind of evolution in it. And so I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about the moment that we're in, and if this moment is so, let's say, kind of ambivalent in terms of where it's at and what is required, then um, why isn't Anida more acceptable? I understand that the radical nature of ego and his criticism of that and his unique criticism on that, because as I've studied the tradition for many, many years, there is nowhere, nowhere in any of the literature, anywhere, that speaks about this as ego, as an activity, as opposed to, they talk of ego, but they talk of more mind, or more an abstraction, but they still criticizing ego, but yet, somehow mind still is there. And another distinction that Adida makes is mind as being attention, which is, I don't find anywhere in that. But just to go in further, and so much of Adida seems actually to be in sociology, psychology, medical, health, everything. It's not even brought into uh, the commerce of the world. It's not even integrated in any of the basic kind of, what would be, uh, are people so offended by that? Well, you just, you brought you about four, four different topics just then, so let's see if we can get to all of that. Yeah. The first thing to say is that Arida was clear in his birth and appearance here that the world is in a particular moment in which all the traditions are exposed at once. So now we're in one global... It used to be, you can see this even more with the internet, but even previous to the internet, you could go into a spiritual bookstore or really any good big bookstore that just had a spiritual section and you would see all the traditions represented. I mean, historically, if you were in Europe, you would just have confronted Christianity and Judaism and maybe in Spain a little bit of Islam, but you know, it, it, was, it was basically everything is available now. Right. So you go into a spiritual bookstore right now and you'll see a Tibetan book and on the back of the book it'll say the one great you know method you know and but you'll find that with everything from shamanism to goddess worship to uh, all the, the major traditions like Hinduism, Buddhism you know but little more minor traditions like Jainism or, right. or uh, Taoism or you know and so how do you make sense out of it? Adida called it the agonizing practice of looking at all of it and he once described it uh, using the metaphor of the three crises of Ypsilanti how uh, this experiment was done in Michigan by Nicholas Rokic who basically put three Jesuses, three people who all thought they were Jesus in the same room figuring that they would see the fruitlessness of their claim 
by having the other two there. And it totally backfired. Right. Totally backfired. They claimed the other was an imposter. Well, now we have all other traditions all claiming that they're the one, the one great. And so Adida realized it was one of the functions that he was going to have to serve was to help clarify the traditions. And Adida uh, came up with a term uh, called the great tradition, which refers to all of humankind's collective exploration of religion and spirituality and truth. And he calls that the great tradition. I mean, there's a tradition of baseball, and a tradition of cooking, and a tradition of ballet. Right. But the great tradition, he says, is what was uh, humankind's quest for truth or spirituality. So that's the great tradition. And Adi Da felt that he, as someone appearing in the late 20th century and then even 21st century, that one of the functions he had to serve was to help make sense out of all that. He didn't have the luxury, as some spiritual teachers have, to just say, ah, don't read, don't read books. He had, had to deal with that. Well, wasn't there some comment that uh, Choyang Trumpa made when he was shown either a picture or a video or a tape of Adida saying something like, it's going to be very difficult to start a new tradition? Yeah, I, I uh, heard that comment. Uh, I was one of the people who traveled to Boulder and uh, at uh, Karmazong met with Cho Yung Trumpa and showed him an hour of Adida. So, uh, we showed him some videotape of Adida and then I asked him if he'd like to see more and he wanted to see more. And, um, and then the next day I asked his, uh, secretary, his personal secretary, uh, what did he say uh, when you got home? And he said two things. He said, first, Adida is obviously a genuine person. And secondly, he said, boy, it's difficult to start a new tradition. Right. And it seems that's what Adida has done. He absolutely has. And it was necessary. He said if, if he had found a tradition that was full or complete, he said he just could have been associated with it and been part of that. But he didn't find one. Right. And one of the aspects of that was to help clarify what the great tradition is all about. And so that's all based, and you know, we can take, I've done whole day seminars on this right, particular right, topic, right, right, right. but to clarify it, it's based on esoteric anatomy. Adida described the esoteric anatomy in the body-mind that is the process that any man or woman has to go through to realize the truth. That there's a psychophysical process in the body-mind. And so Adida described that, which is basically the body, the mind, the, the body, emotions, mind, then all that being devoted to the divine, uh, and that's the, the that's the fourth stage. Is all that being he 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 took this esoteric anatomy and then applied it, broken into seven stages, and the fourth stage is about the body, emotion, and mind then being sacrificed to the divine. Then when that's done with sufficient intensity, the spirit crashes down the frontal line, moves up the spinal line. Uh, then when that's done sufficiently till the pole above mm -hmm. is realized, then it falls through a current called Armitinati to the heart and the right. And then in full divine seven stage realization, it rises again. There's a regeneration of Rinati. Now, I'm just really sure. quickly summarizing it for you. But Adida devised that seven stages of life. And then he did the work of taking all the literatures and traditions of mankind and showing what aspect of that esoteric anatomy or those seven stages where they fell. And not because he's trying to put anybody down or because right, right, he's a right, great right. supporter of all the traditions. Uh, I mean, that was the best thing that a human being could be, and, and, uh, whatever spiritual tradition you're part of. But in order to help people make sense of it, in order to help clarify it, in order to give it all its proper place and its proper role. And uh, that's what the Basket of Tolerance was. And as Adida's librarian, uh, I worked with him on that project. That was the project where I helped supply the books for him so that he could have a comprehensive... Uh, and he was always very clear with me that this was important to do, but that the ultimate teaching transcended the mind. Right, and I guess the key term for me is the when you say the word ultimate, because prior to Adida's realization teaching and who he is, at that time, whether it be Ramakrishna in the 1870s or Upasani Baba or Mayor Baba, whatever, at that time, that these are not little 
guys running around. These are great beings, they are. and they're teaching love, they're teaching compassion, they're teaching, they're transmitting a spiritual blessing to people, and they have thousands and thousands of devotees. And, and I guess, because there's so much to talk about, I don't want to get too far off, but I just really want to put a context that as Anida points out, this is a spiritual realm we live in. This is not just rocks and Psycho fossils. Psychophysical is the it's word he uses. It's a psychophysical world. So, and the nature of this world has to do with a spiritual nature. It's not just... Anida would tell the children, you're more than what you look like. You're more than just your body. You know, more right. than just your right. thinking. Right. There is a spiritual reality. He would have the children rub their hands together and feel the energy that was between their hands. Be sensitive to their, to their dreams. Right. And, to, and that mystery that's there about where we exist, he would ask the question, you know, where are you? And he Adida, described ten fundamental questions. Ten. Ten fundamental questions, which, you know, are, are you know, who... They, they, they're, they're very profound. Right, right. Why is there anything at all? I mean, very profound questions to, uh, to be asked. And uh, absolutely, I mean, one of the reasons Adida felt the, the study of the great tradition was so important is because you were talking about this age we live in. It's a very degraded age. It's called, uh, in the traditions, they, uh, Hindu tradition, they call it the Kali Yuga, which means it's the era where people are most divorced from that spiritual reality most enmeshed in just a materialistic point of view. Uh, scientific materialism has taken hold. Uh, religious fundamentalism has taken hold, in which they're so focused in on a doctrine that they're losing the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. And so Adida was very, is very important to him to go back to what is the truth, what does stand out, what is this spiritual reality. And... Uh, People have lost in this day and age the idea that there really even is something that's genuine that they can practice. Uh, a lot of people take a quick look at the religious traditions and go, I don't want anything to do with that. It seems that part of this culture has an attention deficit that they'll look at something for a short period of time, get a quick look, and then yeah. ta either take what they want and move on to the next thing or Say, no, don't want any of that, go to the next, 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 next. So Adida talks about how the real great tradition, and, and you and I share a love for the great realizers, you know, the ones that are, were, were genuine and, and you can feel the spirit coming through them, that those are, are all of our common inheritance. Right. That we haven't just inherited the washing machine and electricity and the internet and, you know, the fact you can get on a cell phone these days. We've inherited, by being born in this time and place, a tradition of great spirituality. Uh, and then Adida came and he describes and uh, that he brought unique gifts. And uh, the word that I use to describe him is a completing adept. is the word he used. And so I'm, I, I found that. And, and um, when I first came to Adida, what was important to me was not evaluation of Adida over against someone else in particular. Mm -hmm. What was just important to me is I was looking for a genuine teacher, mm -hmm. a teacher I could trust a teacher that I felt could really serve my growth. It really didn't matter to me whether he was the best or the greatest or anything like that.